Welcome to Soul Adventure TV, where we explore what may very well be an unprecedented opportunity in humanity's spiritual and physical evolution, and the choices standing before each and every individual to walk on this grand adventure or not. Do we really know who and what we are and what we can choose to be? I'm your host and fellow soul adventurer, Steve Crow. Our guest today is Sherry Cortland, a channel for her guide group and author of two books, Windows of Opportunity and Raising Our Vibrations for the New Age. Her work as an author was not the path Sherry expected to find herself on. In fact, she says she was quite content to remain in her comfortable spiritual closet while working her day job as the director of specialty sales for a large vacation resort. But her guide said she had three books to write. And with a third of the way, it seems they were correct, and the closet is a distant memory. Sherry, welcome to Soul Adventure TV. Thank you, Steve. I'm so excited to be here. Well, it's great to have you. Uh, as a way of introduction, uh, can you explain a little bit about how you work with your automatic writing, and what is automatic writing, and how you came to learn that? Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. Automatic writing is just one of the ways that we have of communicating with spirit. And for me, it's the best way because everything is written down. You have a written recollection, a recording of it, so you don't have to strain your brain trying to remember. And as we get older, that is a very good thing. Uh, but basically, to automatic write, all you need to do is just really sit down. I meditate for a couple of minutes and then I ask for someone to come through and just kind of if you're doing it with a pen and pencil pen or pencil and paper which is how I used to do it now I use computer just hold the pencil down to the paper and just wait and ask for someone to write with you and then they'll come through it's very important I think to ask who you're writing with when an entity does come through we have the right to know who we're, who we're writing with. And when the information comes through, another important thing is to ask questions. And that's another reason why I love automatic writing so much. You have the opportunity to stop what's happening, ask a question, ask for clarification, and get to the truth of the message that's coming through. Well, you mentioned that you meditate beforehand, but mm -hmm. while you're doing this automatic writing, are you consciously aware of what you're doing? Are the words that you're writing as they're coming in, are you aware of them? Or is it more like a trance where you only discover the information that you've received after the fact? That's a great question. You know, when I first started to do automatic writing, I fully expected to be in this trance-like state that you so often read about. But that's not the case at all. I'm absolutely wide awake. And I hear the words in my head as I'm writing them down. And sometimes people who do automatic writing, they'll hear it in a different voice. I hear it in my own voice. And, and then I just write the words out. Interesting. Well, uh, let's get right into talking about what you call your guide group. I'd mm -hmm. like to know who they are, where they are, what they are. <laughs> Well, there's different guide groups for Windows of Opportunity. You know, that was my first book, and that was the scariest thing that I ever did was to write Windows of Opportunity. You mentioned the spiritual closet before, and I was very happily locked in there. The only reason that I pursued automatic writing at all is because I was so enamored with Shirley MacLaine and Ruth Montgomery and reading all of these wonderful books and all of this great wisdom. And I so much wanted to find out the truth, the truth about why we're here. Why do we have to go through all of these things that we have to go through? And I didn't want to wait for somebody's book to come out. I thought, you know what? Automatic writing, sitting down at the kitchen table, let me just do that too. I tried for three months to do it. It didn't happen. Uh, finally, it happened one night. I was at a psychic development class. And I, the t teacher said, oh, tonight we're going to do automatic writing. Me and my big mouth said, oh, no, this is never going to happen for me. And as I said that, spirit grabbed a hold of my hand and started to write. And that was Jeremy. And Jeremy is my main guide for this particular lifetime. And he, uh, after a couple of years of writing with me, and I was writing with several different entities, said, Sherry, it's time to write a book. Did not want to do that. Because I have a professional career, I was worried about what might happen with that. 
But off we went. There's no arguing with spirits. Certainly learned about that. And so the first guide group came together. That was a circuitous way to answer your question, but here I am. So Jeremy uh, was the leader, I guess you would say, of that first guide group for Windows of Opportunity. Alexio Porath, who is an entity from Arcturus, also one of my guides, part of that guide group. My grandmother, who is currently on the other side. My cousin Linda, one of my aunts, also part of that guide group. My grandmother became the quote-unquote spokes guide for that group and she passed on information to me just like we were on a chat room, in a chat room on the computer and uh, very bold and very demanding for me to get the work done just like it was when she was alive. So uh, maybe they brought her in to make it more comfortable for me and also I think to get me moving because I was not wanting to do this project at all. Uh, for the second book, Raising Our Vibrations for the New Age, I had a different guide group. I had Gilbert, who is an entity that I have incarnated with many times and he's now acting as my guide. Jeremy was back and then when I thought that the book was finished, uh, I had just come back from speaking at Dolores Cannon's uh, Transformational Conference in 2010. I was sitting outside under a tree, I was doing a little meditation with some Moldavite, and then I met a brand new guy that I didn't even know that I had. And he hails from Arcturus, and so he is also part of the guide group for that book. For my third book, I have a whole different uh, set of guides. So different, different groups for different purposes. Ah. Um, your guides, in, in reading through particularly your second book, they are very excited about the special opportunities of the time that we are living in, yeah. which they refer to as the shift. Um, yeah. What is shifting? What is the shift and, and why are we shifting? Well, that's, a, that's an excellent question. I, I think the, the whole shift has been over-talked about and you know, we're coming up now on December 21st, 2012, a date that everyone is scared of and expecting big things and so many people are expecting to just transcend and be off planet Earth. And, you know, the for me and from what I understand from my guide groups, the shift is just a shift in consciousness. And what it's all about is the evolution of the human race. We're evolving into something more than we've ever been before. We almost did it in past times, but I think the last time was the Atlantean, the time of the Atlanteans. Uh, they came very close to it, unfortunately. Uh, they got a little carried away with power, and uh, that was not balanced out with spirituality, and the culture was destroyed, or else it would have happened then. Hopefully we've got it a little bit more right this time. I think that we do. But the shift is just a shift in consciousness. I don't believe, my guides tell me absolutely we will still be here on December 22nd. So I say to everyone, do not cash in your 401k, do not blow your savings account on an end of the world shopping spree in early December because you're going to need that money. We're all going to be here in January 2013. In your book, Raising Vibrations for the New Age, your guides offer us all congratulations and they said, and I'm I believe I'm quoting from the book correctly. They said, the plan is nearing the end and we are celebrating. Yeah. What have they explained to you about the nature of this plan that is now reaching its conclusion? Well, the human race is evolving. I mean, that's the purpose of incarnations, for us to evolve individually as souls, learn and grow in our own way and accomplish the things that we want to accomplish. So we have that to do, but then also as a species, we need to move ahead and we need to grow. So what we're doing, from what I understand from the guide groups, is taking ourselves from a, from a 4D race to a 5D race. So we're raising our vibrations so that we can move forward vibrationally, be at a whole new energy level. That brings with it a much greater ease in lifetimes and living and learning because when you're 5D, Things happen instantaneously. That's why you see also when you're reading the book many, many warnings about watching our words and our thoughts, especially our thoughts now, because these things are, are coming into being very, very quickly. And when you're living in 5D energy, it's instantaneous. You have a thought and you're going to have it. All of our needs are going to be met through a process called apportation at that point, which just means that we're going to think it and we're going to have it. 
And so it's important for us to make this move, move as a species. It's just us climbing up the evolutionary ladder, so to speak. It's just our next rung on that ladder. And they're very excited for us on the other side because, well, it's finally going to happen. And according to, to the guide groups, this has not happened before in human history. So, you know, there's a lot of people here, star seed, light workers. Uh, you've got a lot of spirit here. The the veil is much thinner than it's ever been before. And uh, they say that, of course, there are folks from other dimensions, other planets are all here waiting, watching, because it's such a big galactic event. So, yeah, they're cheering us on. Well, I find that the word plan very interesting when they talk about the plan is nearing the end. And because it makes me think, well, what was this plan? Well, we kind of spoken about that, but whose plan was it and who was supposed to accomplish it? Like, did we make it up the plan ourselves or was it given to us? Or I love that question. I love that question. And I have to tell you, I don't really know the answer to that. I'm going to have to go back and, and ask. But I do know this. I know that for each one of our individual lifetimes, we do plan what we want to accomplish. So we kind of sit around, picture yourself around a conference table, and all the people that are going to be part of our lifetime, they're going to help us, even our little relationship villains who might cause us trouble, those things that will help us open windows of opportunity, help us move forward, they're all there, and we make a plan for our karmic debt, what we want to repay, our growth experiences. So I know that we have a plan for our individual lives, and then another event is, of course, that together we're all working for something. And as far as I know, it's the continued evolution of the human race. Now, who has set this plan in motion? That is just such an excellent question. I can only think that it's the source who has set it in motion, the source, the creator. But then why? Why is the source or the creator wanting to see us take this to the next level? From what I understand is that we are, so how do I say this in a nice way? We are, and this is all in my new book, we are sort of nerve endings for the source. We're out there having experiences, learning things, and everything that we learn and experience goes back to the source. So we are kind of like reporters in a way. And this is just another adventure, if you will. And the source is waiting to see how we handle it, how we move forward. Yeah, that's almost. That, that, that's very interesting. I've heard that explanation as well. And I've, I've always thought, well, doesn't God, doesn't the source, is it, don't they already know everything in a sense? Hasn't it already experienced everything? But then when I hear information like this, it makes me think, well, maybe not. I, I think not. Now, from what I've learned and, and what I've got in my new book, uh, the information that has come to me is that God is not really hands-on. And that explains a lot if you think about it, because terrible things happen to wonderful people all the time. And folks pray and pray and pray, oh, don't let this happen, please save this person, please help this person, I love them. And sometimes help happens and sometimes it doesn't happen. Why? Why is that? And that's one of the truths that I have set out on this journey of my own to uncover. Why must we suffer so much? And there are things in our lives that we have set into motion in order as souls to learn and grow. And even though we might try to put a stop to them through prayer, we're not really being ignored. Our angels, our guides, God, they're hearing us, but they're not interfering because of a little old thing called free will. And of course we have a plan for ourselves. You know, light workers, anybody on this planet, I think that we're all warriors. I think anybody that comes to this planet is a warrior. I'd like to follow up with that term light worker. You hear that constantly this, these days. It's a very in at the moment. And your group wrote that the job of the light worker is first and foremost to attract and hold the light by being the light. Mm -hmm. What does this information mean to you? Well... I, I asked for a definition. What, what exactly does that mean? Because for, for all this time, this new age jargon, you know, hold the light, hold the light, light worker, light worker, what light are we holding? And what they're telling me is that we're holding the light from the great central sun, 
which is located in the center of the Milky Way. And the light from this great central sun is the 5D energy, the 5D light that we are attracting and holding here so that we can help raise the vibrational level of ourselves and the planet. Because it's not only the human race that's moving forward, the planet is moving forward. And I know that you've interviewed uh, Dolores Cannon, so I'm sure that you have talked about the new Earth a little bit. And what I'm getting uh, from my guide group now, and this again will be in my new book, is that the new Earth already exists. 4D Earth, that's where we are. Uh, 3D Earth, excuse me. 3D Earth is where we are. Fourth dimension, of course, is where spirit is. 5D Earth is the new Earth. 5D Earth is already in existence. So you're probably wondering, why haven't we transitioned? Exactly. Yeah? Yes. Okay. Okay. Well, I wonder. I wondered that too because I mean, I thought I would be getting out of Dodge if we had transitioned, but <laughs> here's the thing: we have this beautiful planet Earth that we're all on right now. What are we going to do? We're going to take all those carefully made plans that that we put together for ourselves for growth and learning. And we're just going to walk out. We're going to walk out of those plants. We're going to walk out of this planet. We're going to leave this planet to darkness. We're going to say, oh, we're a light worker. We want to be in 5D energy. This is what we've been working for. Bye-bye, 3D Earth. No, we can't do that. Now, there are, there are many who have transitioned, from what I understand. You've got me talking about my new book instead of the two ones. I don't know if my publisher is going to love that. But <laughs> um, what's, what's going on is that many have transitioned. But why give up a great body? You, people can't just disappear. Life plans are intrinsic and dependent upon each other. So a little thing called a walk-in situation happens. Have you ever heard of that? Yeah, I think Dolores Cannon has talked about that. And maybe she even has. Patricia Corey, a few other people, I think. Okay. Well, what I'm getting from my guides is that Many have already transitioned over to 5D Earth, which is in existence, and then other entities uh, who are of a high enough vibration, and also many who haven't been able to really come to planet Earth because they haven't been able to lower their vibrational level to, to, to where we were, but now we've raised it enough for them to be able to come in. They have come and sort of taken over these bodies, and it kind of sounds like the body snatcher movies, but that's not how it is at all. There's an agreement between the outgoing soul and the incoming soul in order for that to happen. And it's a great thing for the entity coming in. They don't have to go through all the nonsense of being a baby and childhood and all of that. They can just come in, they wrap up whatever the entity uh, had to do of the, of the outgoing entity for that body. They wrap up whatever needs to be done, and then they start to do their own work. And so a lot of transition has happened that way. But for many of us, for many of us, and I know this is going to be so disappointing to the minions of light workers out there, my fellow warriors, but we're not leaving because we have work to do. We are not going to abandon planet Earth. We are going to continue to draw the light, hold the light, and make this 3D Earth the best 3D Earth that it can possibly be, the best version of 3D Earth. That sounds pretty exciting to me, actually. It is exciting. How can a person even know if they are a light worker or not? Well, that's a good question, too. You know, I, I would never walk around telling anyone that I was a light worker. It's really not something that would ever roll off my lips. You see it in my books, but that's only because my guide groups have forced me into saying it. How do you know if you're a light worker? Well, I think that if you care about the planet, that's probably a little inkling into it. If you care about other people, that's a little inkling into it, a little preview that you might be a light worker. If you care about having a peaceful world, ending war, no violence, those kinds of things are probably indicators that you're a light worker. Do you think light workers have uh, essentially chosen to do this work before incarnating, or is that something they've maybe uh, adopted while they were here? I mean, how do you become? I, yeah, I well, that's a good question too. I think I think that many have chosen it and and came into being, knowing that they were going to maybe not use the term light worker, but going to help the planet. That their goal here was more than just taking care of their own karmic debt that their goal was to help move the planet, move the human race forward. 
I think that many light workers were drafted too. Maybe people are entities, souls who had particular skills that were necessary to help move this all along. So I think there are people who, who maybe are, are light workers, not by choice. So those are the grumbly ones. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's interesting. Sometimes uh, people are living, you know, quite uh, conventional lives, and uh, one day they find themselves drawn, or maybe, as you said, drafted, pushed towards a completely different way of, of being. And uh, it's in interesting to think about. Well, well, maybe that was the plan all along. Who knows? Well, what about you and Soul Adventure TV? Did, when you were a little boy, did you think, "Oh, I'm going to have this TV show, Soul Adventure TV"? Uh, no, <laughs> no, no. That... And I never thought that I was going to write books and go out and preach to people about how to treat the planet, vegetarianism, and the evolution of the human race. Those were the furthest things from my mind, and I did everything in my power to not do it. And you know, one thing that I do, I would like to say to your viewers, your wonderful viewers, is this. You know, I might have written uh, three books, two are out, one is coming, but there is absolutely nothing special about me. And the fact that I can do automatic writing, so can you. I communicate directly with spirit, so can you. And in my new book, that's what I talk about, exactly how to accomplish that. Because we are very powerful beings, and it's time for us to wake up and realize just who we are, just who we are. And everyone, I think, has the right to speak directly to spirit, the right to speak directly to your own guides, to your higher self, to get that direction that we all wish that we had and that we want so that we can move forward and live our lives with as little drama and as little pain as humanly possible. There, I'm off my soapbox. <laughs> um, I don't know if you're familiar with the channel Paul Selleck and the messages of his guides who call themselves the word but I was curious to know if your guides have spoken of the frequency of the Christ consciousness that is here now for man and if we individually choose to lie to it are, are you are you uh, familiar with this term Christ consciousness and has it uh, I heard the term Christ consciousness my guides have not discussed this and I'm not familiar with Mr. Selleck but I have to say that when I'm working on my books I try very hard not to read whatever else is coming through that way I know that I'm being a clear channel and I'm not taking anybody else's information so I think that's obviously something that I need to catch up on and I will but Christ consciousness not something tell me a little bit about what it is well, I I, th I think it's a, it's aligning to the vibration essentially essentially of, of love, you know, of source, mm -hmm. and uh, that is expressed as uh, the Christ. And by that, I'm not speaking of religion. I'm not speaking of the personality Jesus Christ. It's not a mm -hmm. Christian thing. It has more to do with essence, with source, with vibration. Mm -hmm. So right. when you're aligning to the the frequency of the Christ consciousness, you're uh, you're aligning to the frequency of Source. That's how I understand it. Well, I like that. I like that a lot. And maybe that's another way of talking about fifth dimensional energy and just raising our vibrations. And you can either just call it raising your vibrations, or you can call it Christ consciousness. I like it. It's all about love. So it's got to be about peace also and moving forward and becoming just better becoming our best version. So uh, I like that. I will read that book. Excellent. Um, your guides, uh, I want to get into the, the, the new earth uh, because okay. your guides have been very explicit about it. I must say I was, kind, I was very surprised. I've never re read such detailed information. But they, they have supported the idea that part of what is happening now, and what you've mentioned on, on the level of frequency and vibration, is that our beautiful little planet is splitting into two versions. A higher, two, two yes. A higher vibratory new Earth, if you want to call it that, existing in the fifth dimension, as you mentioned. And then what you might call, let's just call it, for lack of a better term, the old Earth. Okay. Uh, so I'd like, to, I'd like to ask you about some of the information about what this new Earth uh, uh, might be like, and I'd like to start with the concept of family life. Now, does the concept of families move forward into the new earth? From what I understand, in the beginning, 
things will be similar to the way they are on old earth. Now, I do want to mention this. Light workers, many of us are are because I've said that a lot of us are not going to transition, we're going to stay with old earth. We are also doing some work on new earth in our sleep, during our sleep time. So it's not like we're totally getting cut out of it. I mean, we help to make it happen. So it's something that we're working on in our dream time, so to speak. So, so don't feel badly if you feel like you're getting cut out. You're not. You're, you're already there. You know what it's like. And you can incarnate there in another lifetime. Your next lifetime, when you're done here on old earth, you want to incarnate there, that's where you're going to go. If you want to go to another dimension, another planet, whatever best serves your life plan at the time, that's what you're going to, to make happen for yourself. But as far as families are concerned, what my guide groups are telling me is that in the beginning, there will be birth and family the same way that it happens now. But that's just as we start to get used to being in the fifth dimensional energy and not to make it such a, a, a huge difference for us as we're incarnating, but that eventually, no, families will not be really necessary because the way, the way that things will happen on New Earth or the way that things are happening on New Earth, I should say, since it already exists, is that when we incarnate, we're going to be awake. We're going to know why we're there. We're going to choose jobs that will help us learn the things that we need to learn or contribute to the society that we're building here on old earth let's face it we're blind i mean we're like deaf dumb and blind when we come in here we have to hope that we can wake up find our way what are our windows of opportunity what are what's the karma how do we get through this we're just completely blind but we're not going to be there we're going to be awake when we incarnate there so family life is slowly going to go away because it just won't be necessary. Uh, you know, I was surprised to read, well, uh, maybe not surprised, but it was interesting, let's put it that way, about how much, in some sense, it's not changing. For instance, things like uh, you mentioned birth, but also uh, having things like jobs, eating food, having houses to live on. Uh, why do you think those things will continue to be necessary I don't think that they're necessary at all, but I think that they're think I think it's like comfort food, like apple pie, pumpkin pie, those things. I'm vegetarian, so I'm not going to say meat and potatoes, but you know, comfort food. And and, and on New Earth, we, we want to be comfortable and we want to adjust, and it's a gradual adjustment. And so, but jobs, I don't think are ever going to go away because we're always wanting to learn things. We're wanting to move forward, uh, you know, growth for our souls. And, and I don't think that the human race is going to stop evolving just because 5D Earth now exists. There are a lot of other levels, I think, to, to go to and a lot of things to accomplish. I think one of the biggest things, though, about life on New Earth is kind of waking up to our galactic origins and reconnecting with other races. Oh, I definitely want to talk to you about that in, ju in just a few minutes. But uh, it's, it's interesting when we talk about jobs and work uh, carrying forward. My sense of it, though, is it's not like they're going to be call centers and, you know, uh, uh, cubicle farms and th that kind. Of, that's not the kind of work we're probably no, talking about, are we? Not at all. Not at all. We're, gonna, we're going to do uh, work or Maybe we should change the word work and come up with something better. Career, uh, growth opportunities, something like that. Because we'll, we'll do things that we're interested in and that will help us create this new society and, and make it go forward. So it'll be fun things. Nobody's going to be laboring as a parking lot attendant. Nobody's going to have to be making the fries and burning their hands on the oil at McDonald's or Burger King. None of, none of that. We're going to be very busy getting to know our galactic neighbors, you know, the, those folks that helped, uh, helped us move this far along and, um, and finding out new ways to do things and really coming into our power. Because my understanding is that while there will be food and food plenty because there will not be any famine at all and it will not be difficult to find food, food will be there, but eventually we're not going to need it. Our bodies are changing. They're becoming lighter. They're becoming more energy than physical matter. And so that's something that we'll be also adjusting to in the, in the 5D energy. Uh, you mentioned uh, earlier that uh, bursts would continue, uh, at least uh, for temporarily in, in the beginning. 
Which brings me to a question you're probably not going to be surprised to, to hear. What about coupling? What about sex? Do those, <laughs> do those exist or are we... Uh, <laughs> you know, my guys have not discussed that at all, but really? I, I certainly hope it continues, and I would think that it would be so much better in 5D energy, don't you? Well, I would certainly hope so, but <laughs> that's just me. <laughs> I love it. Well, I'll have to ask them about that. That's a good question. I am sure that Gilbert will love to answer that question. <laughs> Excellent. <laughs> I don't want him to get the wrong impression of me, though. I mean... <laughs> I'll get back to you on that. <laughs> okay. Uh, let's uh, get back for a moment to the old earth, and I'm growing increasingly unhappy with that term, but okay, old earth. You got me thinking about sex. I don't know. If I... <laughs> <laughs> um, so the people that uh, 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 do not move forward, um, my understanding is that they're, in essence, temporarily... Uh, electing to stay behind in order to continue to have these third dimensional experiences. Is that sort of what your guides are, are explaining as well? Well, you know, some people are electing to stay to, to continue the work that's being done. Other people are staying because in order for them to learn what they need to learn, they need to be in a 3D energy environment. The earth as it is now, the earth that we're on, offers things that we may not find on on other planets and so it's the best way for some entities for some souls to continue their growth cycle so i don't think that anybody is staying behind because they're not worthy of moving forward at all because we all come from the same place we all emanate from the source and because we all emanate from the source we're all equal and it's time for us to wake up and realize that but uh, karma, uh, reincarnation, those will continue on in the third D old earth, correct? My understanding is that karma will continue and reincarnation will continue here because it th those are tools, those are those are ways to move forward, and and so yeah, so those will be here. But those who don't need to deal with those anymore and can move on to something else will do so, unless they're here to help. Unless they just want to incarnate here to to help move this particular version of Earth forward. Yeah, uh, as you were talking, you know, I was I was thinking that you know maybe there's a third possibility of of of, of spirits existing partly on the new Earth, but choosing to come to the old Earth to be of assistance to help with the growth, but not necessarily needing to stay there. In other words, they're sort of. I don't, you know, commuting is probably not quite the, the right word. But well, I think doing that, we're doing that at night. I think we're commuting absolutely. Right. Yes, yes, yeah. that's a good point. Yeah, yeah. The, uh, the theory of parallel universes is now mm -hmm. pretty much well established in our scientific mm -hmm. communities. It is. And, uh, but that's something that spiritual people have been talking about for, for a long, long time. What is your understanding of your guide's take on parallel realities and, and how they are formed? You know, it's such a it's such a difficult thing really to wrap one's head around this theory of parallel universes. And my understanding is that there was a guy named Hugh Everett, uh, and I think that he was in Princeton, if I'm not mistaken, working on his doctorate, and he was doing something with quantum matter, trying to prove how it behaves or trying to figure out how it behaves, and he put forth something called the many worlds theory, I think it is, and that's all about parallel universes, and I was just shocked when I first learned about that, that somebody at Princeton University would be talking about parallel universes, and I've often wondered whatever happened to his career after he put that forward, um, but parallel universes, it, some say that uh, as we make each choice, whatever choice we make, we create a, an additional parallel world. I don't know. I, I think that it's probably possible. If, if I believe that there can be a 5D Earth, why not many other Earths? Exactly. Why not? I, I don't know. I'm, I'm going to have to go with it and say that I, I do believe in it, but I find it mind-boggling to think about it. And because I always wonder, well, 
did I write the books in, the, in another world? Or what happened if I didn't? Then was I blonde in another place? Was I thinner? You know what I mean? Your mind can just go crazy. <laughs> Uh, there's a physicist uh, by the name of Michio Kaku, who's uh, quite well known for his work in quantum mechanics. And uh, from uh, television shows and books and interviews I've seen a, of him, you know, this parallel realities, multiverse, uh, that's not foreign at all to, to uh, new science. It's, it's, it's actually, uh, uh, in fact, I understand it's, it has to, they have to exist in order for quantum mechanics to work at all. Yeah. So. Yes, yes, yes. And what Niels Bohr said, if, if you don't believe in, in uh, quantum physics, then you don't understand quantum physics, which I thought was pretty interesting to so, say. I, maybe, it's, maybe it's a matter of science, our modern science, catching up with metaphysics. Yes. Um, you know, there's, uh, maybe we'll have a new science, maybe the science of light. You know, come, come Wouldn't that be wonderful? I love that, the science of light. Because why can't science and metaphysics, why can't they coexist? Why, why does it have to be right or wrong? I never get that. Both sides are a little bit judgy, and I don't understand all that judgmental nonsense. I think it's time to put that in the past and move forward together. Well, Spirit has, has, has written that, uh, that that term, science of light, will that, 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 that's coming forward now, actually. Um, I think in order for any of this kind of information to make any sense, we first have to adopt a very different view of what it means to be alive, to be a human, to understand who and what we are. In other words, do you feel that we are our body, our mind, or are we something more entirely? Oh, yeah, absolutely. I think that this is just a, this is just a, our bodies are just a means for us to exist here on this planet in this energy and and it's it's just a, it's a tool our bodies are tools for us so that we can learn lessons have experiences pay back karmic debt sometimes create new karmic debt which you know is never fun but it's just it's 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 how we it's how we move i i have thought about this a lot i have talked with, about this with my guides a lot and you've hit on something that is is really the reason that I started studying metaphysics in the first place 25 years ago. Why do we go through the things that we go through? Because, I mean, let's be real here. Life is not always fun. There's a great deal of suffering here. And why? Why do we have to do it? Why? And it's, it's just, it's all about learning and, and moving forward. And why not be awake to it? There, there was a time when all, all I wanted was to know what was going to happen next. I want to see my psychic, I want to talk to my psychic, I want to know what's happening next. But I've come to learn and understand it's really not such a great thing to know what's going to happen next because if you are going to have a car accident that may create hundreds and hundreds of windows of opportunity for different people to learn and grow, how are you going to be able to live your life knowing that that car accident is coming down the road? or? Suppose that you have decided that you're going to have a violent death this time, that that violent death is going to help you somehow in your life plan. And it's going to help other people create windows of opportunity again. How can you possibly live day-to-day -day life if you know that that's going to happen? It's just impossible. And that's why I think that we uh, are not awake to what our plan is, why we forget what our plan is. And while initially I thought that was a horrible thing, now I think that it's like a mercy to not know what's coming. But I, that said, I think it's important to understand why crappy things happen to wonderful people and how we can avoid more crappy things happening to us. And that's the whole purpose of the windows of opportunity concept that the original guide group brought forward. Well, if we were awake and we, and we knew our, our mission and we, we recognized our past lives right from the start, then this wouldn't be much of a test or a challenge for us. We'd be, uh, right. we, we wouldn't really be getting the benefit of, of the, uh, of the earth, earthly experience. And there, Steve, is the difference. You've just nailed it on the head between old earth, what I call 3D earth, and new earth, right? Right. right. One we're awake and, and, and one we're kind of just in a haze, but for a very important reason, for a very important reason. 
you've uh, mentioned uh, that uh, at least uh, two of your uh, guides are are not from around here, should we say, uh, <laughs> that there are Arturians. And yeah. uh, I would be interested, and I'm sure our, our viewers would be interested in knowing more about the Ar Arturians. What, what can you tell us? I can tell you a little bit about the Arcturians. Alexio Porath was my first Arcturian guide to come through. And he came through, it was, I'm going to say, maybe around 87, 88. He was one of the first guides. And his energy was so forceful. I was still using pencil and paper back then to do automatic writing. I would break pencil after pencil after pencil when he would come through. And one of the first things that he talked to me about was Arcturus and Arcturus being a way station. And at the time, I didn't understand what a way station was, and I didn't question him because I didn't realize that we could question spirit back then. Of course, now I'm nothing but questions. Uh, but when it comes to Arcturus, what I understand is that it's a place where all souls that are coming to Earth pass through. They pass through the Arcturian energy, and that kind of prepares us for what we're going to encounter here because coming from the 4D energy on the other side of the veil and then into this really coming from the light almost into the darkness so to speak because we are going to be so blind it, it, it takes a little bit of planning and training and that's what the Arcturians do and anyone can have an Arcturian master if they want to if they want to speak with an Arcturian guide I'm not the only one <laughs> and and what are the Arcturians themselves? What are, what are they like? Well, they, from what I've heard from Alexio Porath and also from Aknanda, uh, they exist in more of a, they're more of an energy-based type of body. They don't really uh, eat food. You know, they, they get what they need from, from the energy sources. And they are the archetype, archetype or the future ideal of what Earth can be. So they're here to help us. They want they have a great interest in Earth and in helping us move forward. And that's because well they they're all they're working with the souls that are coming here. So it makes sense that they have a vested interest in us moving forward. Have you dealt with had contact with uh, entities from other uh, star systems? I have not personally, no. They, the guides uh, talked a little bit about the Pleiades uh, being Earth's main genetic connection, but it, not a whole lot into, into that at all, no. You know, it, my guides don't really talk a lot about themselves. They, they talk more about what my to-do list is, if that makes sense, and move along, Sherry, hurry up, and let's get this done. <laughs> yes, absolutely. <laughs> uh you know, an aspect that I don't think a lot of people consider when they're thinking about the uh, ETs, quote unquote, is that doesn't reincarnation uh, imply that uh, we're not necessarily just incarnating here as humans on Earth, that many of us have actually lived ET lives? Absolutely. You've heard the term starseed, right? Right. What is starseed? It's just a soul that has had lifetimes in other dimensions or on other planets. And Honestly, I think we're all star seed. Yes, so do I. Yeah. Absolutely. Sherry, it's been so interesting and fun uh, speaking with you. Tell me, uh, I know you have a new book coming out. Tell us about that. Tell us what else is happening with you. Well, the book uh, has just landed at my publisher, Ozark Mountain. They just got it in the mail, I would say, in the last day or two. Uh, so I'm waiting to hear back from them. And that's really a, like a spiritual workbook, uh, a plan of action to help us move forward uh, on this planet, on our version of Earth, and to not leave behind, or want to leave behind this, this version of Earth. So in that way, I think almost it's going to be disappointing to a lot of people who read Vibrations and loved it and, and want to transition, and now they're getting the news, hey, you know what, God's not hands-on, the Creator's not hands-on, this is why we're doing what we're doing, we have to take responsibility for ourselves, and you know what? let's connect directly with spirit. And so I have a lot of uh, 
of folks dropping by, some psychic mediums, some other authors uh, who have put together exercises and meditations uh, to help us become the best version of us that we can be. I know I keep repeating myself by saying that, but that's what I think we're here to do, to become the best version of ourselves that we can be. So hopefully that book will be out in the summer uh, of 2013. And Raising Our Vibrations is out now, and so is Windows of Opportunity. And you can get those uh, from uh, OzarkMountain.com, my publisher, or uh, Barnes & Noble or Amazon. And it's also in the Barnes & Noble stores. And how can people keep in contact and up-to-date with you? Uh, I assume you have a website or maybe a newsletter? Or... I do. I have a website, SherryCortland.com. And from SherryCortland.com, you can go to my twice-weekly column, my metaphysical column on examiner.com. And where else can you go? What else do I have? Anything to do with any upcoming workshops that I'm doing will be on there. Uh, anything exciting and new that I get from my guides are on there. You can also connect to my Facebook author page. And every Friday, one of my guides... Uh, leaves us a message. He, I turn my hands over to him, and we get a message from a guide. So if you want to see messages from my guides without reading the books, go to Facebook. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Sherry, for being so generous with your time and sharing your insights and experiences with our audiences. As always, we invite our viewers to leave their comments, questions, mm -hmm. and guest recommendations on the souladventure.tv website or on the YouTube page or on Facebook. And please feel free to share this video. After all, this information is meant for everyone. So until next time, this is Steve Crow, your host, wishing you an enlightening and fulfilling soul adventure. Bye-bye, Sherry. Bye-bye.